Let us now look at convex problems. We have already seen the form of a general optimization problem. A convex optimization problem, the standard form is as follows. X star is equal to arg min of f naught of x, where f naught of x is convex. f i of x is less than equal to 0 for i equal to 1 to m. And a i transpose x minus b i is equal to 0 for i equal to 1 to p. So the requirements here are that these two functions f naught and f i of x are convex which means that their domains are convex domain of f naught and domain of f i are all convex sets and also that f i and f naught are convex functions. Additionally, observe that we are not allowing any general equality constraints. In fact, we are only allowing f i inequality constraints. So these are only f i inequality constraints. So we require that h i, which we were using earlier, is of this specific form a i transpose x minus b i for any a i and b i. So this is the standard form of a convex optimization problem. Two things are very important here. First that seemingly non-convex problems, which means problems which are not of this form, can be converted by some manipulations into this form. And second, many times there are many software which are written which will only recognize the standard form. So what does this mean? You, If you have a problem which is convex but is not in the standard form, you have to convert it into the standard form so that the software which you are using to solve it may recognize it. And you may have a problem which is not in the standard form and which may appear to be non-convex but sometimes you can convert it into a convex form. So seemingly non-convex problems can be converted into the standard form. Let's take an example of what I'm saying. So let's consider the example minimize x1 square plus x2 square x1 by 1 plus x2 square is less than equal to 0 and x1 plus x2 square is equal to 0. By our definition this is not in the standard form and we could even say that this is non-convex because Observe that the equality constraint is not affine, right? We were only allowing affine equality constraints and this function on this side is not convex, right? But we were only allowing convex functions. So we were saying convex less than equal to zero. So this function is not convex and this equality is not affine. However, you can observe that this function the denominator is always positive. So saying that x1 by 1 plus x2 square is less than equal to 0 is equivalent to saying that x1 is less than equal to 0. Likewise, saying that x1 plus x2 square is equal to 0 is equivalent to saying that x1 plus x2 is equal to 0. The objective function remains the same. So this problem can actually be re-expressed into this form. And now this problem, this form is actually standard form because the objective is convex, the inequality constraint is convex and the equality constraint is affine. So here this is an example where we have construct, converted a problem which was in non-standard form and seemingly non-convex into a problem which is now in the standard form and is in fact convex. This fact that we can convert seemingly non-convex problems into convex problems is very very important. In fact this is what makes convex optimization so challenging. The software may say that this is not a standard form and therefore will not solve it. 
But if you have the idea that this can be converted into a convex form, then you will instead plug in this one and actually be able to get a solution. There are many many problems in various areas which people thought were not convex and therefore they were not able to solve them or were solving them by using inefficient ways designed for general problems. But when they realized that they can be converted into convex form, they were able to solve those problems much faster and in much more efficient way. Remember that we said that convex problems can be solved with a lower complexity as compared to non-convex problems. So there are several scenarios in which you can carry out this conversion. Let's take one another easy example, which is that consider the problem in the standard form. So let's say that a problem is of this form. And let's say AI transpose X minus BI is equal to zero. So this problem is actually equivalent. So what is the meaning of equivalent here? We have used this many times. So two problems are said to be equivalent if I can obtain the solution of one from the other and vice versa. So I can go from the solution of this problem to the solution of the other problem. For instance, consider the problem minimize alpha times f0 of x, beta i times fi of x less than equal to 0 for i equal to 1 to m and gamma i ai transpose x minus bi is equal to 0. So when are these two equivalent? Whenever alpha is greater than 0, beta i is a greater than 0. So whenever alpha is greater than 0, minimizing f0 of x is same as minimizing some constant positive constant times f0 of x. Likewise, saying that fi of x is less than equal to 0 is equivalent to saying that beta i times fi of x is less than equal to 0 for beta i greater than 0 and gamma i is not equal to 0. Right. So under this condition, these two problems are equivalent. So this is an example where you can convert between different forms of the problem and still solve the same thing. The objective value here will be different. Note that these are actually different problems. So objective value here, for example, if this is 2, this would be 4 if alpha is 2. right? So these will have different objective values. But in this case, x star will be same in both. That is not necessary for two problems to be equivalent. They can be equivalent even if x stars are different. So we'll see several more examples of equivalent problems and how to convert between problems later on.